This presentation is an attempt to establish the DNA profile of what uh, is known as the Lost Tribe of Israel. Starting with DNA, it's the most remarkable uh, system which exists in every cell of the bodies of living things. Uh, it's self-activating, it's self-replicating and it's self-repairing and dictates the structure of the organism. DNA is packaged into genes and genes are packaged into chromosomes. A full set of uh, chromosomes in human beings is referred to as the genome, consists of 23 pairs of chromosomes. One pair are the reproductive mechanism. X and Y are the reproductive chromosomes in human beings. Males have one X and one Y. And females have two X chromosomes. It's possible to impersonate the opposite sex, but that doesn't change the gender. If the father passes on his Y chromosome, a boy is born. If he passes on his X chromosome, a girl is born. Now the Y chromosome is normally passed from father to son unchanged, but sometimes an SNP or SNP mutation occurs on the Y chromosome. An SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism, mutation, any alteration in the DNA. DNA is the instruction manual for our bodies. The graphical representation of DNA is two spirals with ladder steps in between, sort of like a circular staircase. Think of sections of this DNA as spelling out individual words in that instruction manual. These sections are called genes, and the little ladder steps within the section are pairs of things called nucleotides, the smallest known component in DNA. In fact, a nucleotide is only one millionth of a millimeter across. These ladder steps, or pairs of nucleotides, represent the four molecules that make up the letters in the alphabet of genetics. The order of these nucleotides on one gene spell out the meaning or function of that gene. Here's where the breakthrough comes in. Scientists have determined that on some genes, a pair of nucleotides is not the correct letter for that regular configuration of that gene. If you think of a gene as a word that is spelled out in English, such as Mississippi, that might be changed to M-I-S-I-I-S-S-I-P-P-I -I -S -S -I -P -P -I if one of the letters was wrong. In genetics, this error is called single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNP for short. So staying with the Y chromosome, what are Y chromosome haplogroups? Well, the groups of males with the same SNP mutations or markers accumulated on the Y chromosome over many successive generations. Therefore haplogroups are branches on the family tree of males and identify early migrations of population groups. This chart shows the mutations or markers on the male Y chromosome which have over many generations produced the various haplogroups. This chart or map shows the Y haplogroups of the world before 1500 AD and the subsequent colonizations. Eurasian males who send in a DNA sample for Y chromosome testing receive a migration map and various bits of information, some of which we can question. For instance, we can question the imaginary tens of thousands of years and the African origin, because this is an invention of evolutionism. The scientific data on deep ancestry genetics 
has been falsely overlaid with molecule to man evolutionism which has distorted the picture. The human population growth rate is evidence that the human race is only a biblical few thousand years old. Using United Nations population statistics, 139 years is the doubling period which has been estimated between the years 1500 and 2000 AD. According to the Bible, eight people survived the biblical flood in 2348 BC, Genesis 10. The population in 2011 was 7 million. Therefore, the population doubled on average every 147 years, and this broadly agrees with the United Nations average of 139 years. The earth is only thousands of years old, not millions. Mud on the ocean floor, salt in the oceans, the magnetic field of the earth, helium in rocks, C14 in coal and diamonds, soft tissue found in the oldest fossils and the human population at only 7 billion. There are no ape to human links. Neanderthals, classified as human now, Ramapithecus, an ape, Piltdown Man, a hoax based on a human skull cap and an ape jaw, Nebraska Man, a hoax, Java Man, now classified as human. Australopithecus, no longer an ape, uh, no longer a human link, it was an ape. Keep that which committed to thy trust, avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. Or in a modern version, don't pay any attention to godless and stupid talk that sounds scientific but really isn't. The Apostle Paul writing to Timothy in the Bible. After the biblical flood, all were descended from Ham, Shem and Japheth, the sons of Noah. Not from Africa, rather the Middle East. Descendants of Ham, Shem and Japheth dwelt at Shinar, modern Iraq, and built the Tower of Babel. From China, people were scattered across all the earth. The separation of languages and habitat resulted in different cultures. According to Bill Bryson, in his book The Mother Tongue, people in widely separated places suddenly and spontaneously developed the capacity for language at roughly the same time. It was as if people carried around in their heads a genetic alarm clock that suddenly went off all around the world. We now turn to Ur of the Chaldees, the original home of the patriarch Abraham, excavated in the 19th century by Woolley. In Genesis 17 we read, Thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. I will make thee exceeding fruitful, will make nations of thee, kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed throughout all generations. Abraham's Isaac, uh, son Isaac was the chosen uh, descendant in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Subsequently Isaac's son Jacob was chosen and Jacob we read in Genesis 28 took the journey from Beersheba towards Haran. He settles one evening and has a vision. William Blake's illustration there of the vision or dream of Jacob's ladder. Thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, the north and the south. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Jacob made Joseph's sons the birthright tribes of the Israel nation. 
Ephraim, a multitude of nations, Manasseh, a great people. Subsequently, when their occupation in Canaan was terminated, the king of Assyria took Samaria, carried Israel away into Assyria, placed them in Hela and Habor, and the river Gozan, in the cities of the Medes. And in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib come up against the fenced or walled cities of Judah and took them. All that was left now were the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So the Jewish encyclopedia tells us the Israelites who were subjugated by the Assyrian power disappear from the pages of history. The scriptures speak of a future restoration of Israel. The ten tribes are certainly in existence but must exist under a different name. In Schofield's commentary confirms that the captivity of the ten tribes have never been restored to Palestine. Through the prophet Amos, God said, I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, but they would not be lost. Although lost to history, not lost to God. Ellicott's commentary, the prediction is very remarkable, is pointing to the indestructible vitality of the Israel race and its wide diffusion among all the nations. In Hosea we read, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, in other words, deported, there it shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. What about the numbers, the population of the ancient Israelites? Well, in uh, McClintock and Strong's Encyclopedia, we get a number of somewhere between five and a half to six millions with the comments how could this number of people be lost the dead sea scrolls has a fragment of the book of baruch who was jeremiah's scribe he writes in the sixth century that uh, the nine and a half tribes had migrated out of assyria across the river euphrates and he assures them of redemption. And then in Esdras we read the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. Josephus, Jewish historian of the first century, says more or less the same thing, the ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates till now and are an immense multitude and not to be estimated in numbers. Now the narrow places of the Euphrates is the last known location of the lost tribes of Israel. The narrow places of the Euphrates are in Armenia and south of the Caucasus. And when we look at a genetic map, we see that um, in this coded map, the Patrilinean uh, lineages of the Caucasus give us R1b, or the R haplogroup. Of particular prominence in Armenia are haplogroups R and some J, which are detected in the Ararat Valley. Um, these two lineages exhibit uh, the um, R haplogroup. R1b represents the largest haplogroup for Armenians. Comparisons show that most Europeans have Armenian origins. This map shows the migration of the R haplogroup across uh, Asia and Europe westwards. Mark Lechner, senior technical editor of the Genebase tutorial, says the origin of haplogroup R has not been pinpointed, although most evidence leads to a general placement in Central Asia and around the Eurasian steppes. 
And now listen to a short clip from a lecture given by a geneticist on this subject. When you look at this map of the world, the only place in the world where you have a rainbow of colors of different groups is, the, is Western Asia and Central Asia. The rest of the world is very mono haplogroup. And I'll show you the next, in the next slide what uh, Europe looks like. And here in Europe, you basically have uh, one group in, shown in red, which is R1B, um, very predominant in Western Europe, and people whose descendants, uh, whose ancestors come from there. You have two groups which are typical of Northern Europe and Southern Europe. Um, you have uh, the, um, the Russians and the Slavs who have the group in yellow, which is called R1B. It, it's only when you start getting into the Mediterranean that it mixes a little bit more. And uh, just to illustrate how uh, this works, because every time it's somebody who develops a mutation, he has many sons, the sons pass that to their son, and once they start moving, that haplogroup starts moving. I'm going to talk a little bit about the European R1B haplogroup, which happens to be also the most important haplogroup in Armenians also. When you test Armenian males, uh, 35 to 40% of them belong to this group, which, strangely enough, is the predominant one by far in Western Europe. It, it stayed for a long, long time in, in Central Asia, in and around the, um, the Armenian uh, region, to the north, to the east a little bit, the Caspian Sea, between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. And it only started moving, if you can see here, 3,000 years ago, or a little bit more, into Europe. So all of these Europeans, R1Bs, are recent arrivals. Um, and now they represent up to 80 to 90 percent of the Celtic populations, the Irish, the, uh, the Welsh, uh, the, the, the Bretons, the Basques. But whenever we do ancient DNA studies in Europe that go beyond four to 5,000 years, we never find any R1Bs. So when you do the tree of R1B, you see here, for example, that the oldest versions in the little map are centered around Iran and the Caspian Sea, south of the Caspian Sea, both sides. All of the Armenian tested so far who are R1B belong to ancient parts of the tree, and all of the Europeans who belong to these two big groups, including Bernard Pouli, who is a very famous Armenian linguist living in Belgium, the country where we reside, belong to some of the um, more younger branches. And this shows you where some of these younger European branches are located. You have a typically Celtic Atlantic uh, group, you have an Italo-Celtic group, you have a, a Basque group, and then you have a Germanic group also. So all of these, this is just to show you how you can take uh, DNA studies and the haplogroup studies and the mutations and you tie them to specific people who lived at a specific time and you can really date uh, exactly when these branches came into existence. And people in, in Western Europe, for example, can really know now from which Irish or Celtic or Germanic tribe they came from. That's how accurate uh, DNA testing is. So having now established that the origin of haplogroup R uh, is the uh, haplogroup of the uh, ten tribes, the lost tribes of Israel, what about the Jews? Well, the Jews are primarily around about the J region, and uh, the question is, why the difference? The Jewish nation was formed in the 5th century BC, consisting of some Israelites only from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. We know that from the Bible. They remained in the Holy Land for several hundred years after the majority of Israel's Israelites had commenced their migrations into Europe. So Jews do not share all the same haplogroup markers. John Wilson, uh, 19th century, one of the earliest researchers of the Israel identity question, identity of the lost tribes of Israel, he says that we are to look for the descendants of all Israel, not only among the Germans and the Anglo-Saxon offspring, but also in Italy and especially in France and Switzerland, the Goths, some of whom passed in northward into Scandinavia, the Ostrogoths who turned southward into sunny Italy, and also the Visigoths in Spain. In the prophet Jeremiah we see that he refers to the Israelites, 
in isles afar off, and promising that God who scattered them would gather them. Thus saith the Lord which giveth the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night. It's only if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, that the seed of Israel would cease. So what we can say is that God has honoured his promises to Abraham and Jacob, Israel in the Christian nations of the Nordic, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic and related peoples. And there's the rubberman pictures Jacob leaning upon his staff as depicted in the book of Hebrews. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west and east and north and south a nation and company of nations and these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Prolific colonizers, many nations and agents of Christian missions. <laughs>